What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna be teaching you how to get strong off the floor from your deadlift, as well as covering some press tips and then a conditioning routine that you can try for your training. So let's get on into it. What is going on guys, I'm Coach Joe and I'm currently not in the lion's den, but if you're new to this channel, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell right here for the videos coming out right when I upload them. Uh, but this is gonna be day three of my training. We're doing a series called Train Like Me. And at the end of the series, I'm gonna be giving you guys a programming block for you to try. So make sure that you watch the videos all the way through and we'll give the programming block in the next video that's coming out. But for this video, we're gonna start with a deadlift variation, specifically a pause deadlift. And I'm gonna be talking about ways that you can get stronger off the floor because that seems to be one of the number one issues that people have is getting stuck off the floor with their deadlift. We're gonna dive into some accessory work that I do, some pressing variations, and then some conditioning. So uh, stick around, listen to the commentary, and hopefully you guys can pick some things that are gonna help you with your training. What is up guys? We are now in the commentary for this training session. This is day three of four for the Train Like Me series. And on this day, we are doing a deadlift variation. So this is my second deadlift day. And when I do my second deadlift day, I wear straps and no belt. So there's no belt gonna be worn, which just helps auto-regulate the intensity and just manages fatigue. So if you guys don't do any form of auto-regulation, highly recommend it. And we're gonna dive into it. So. When you guys had answered the question for me about where your sticky points were, I would say 90 some percent of you said from the floor. So what I recommend is doing things like pause deadlifts, which is what I'm doing right now, and doing something like a deficit deadlift. So standing on say a 25 pound bumper plate or an inch or something that's about two inches. I wouldn't really go any higher than two inches. I don't think it's necessary. If you want to just for shits and gigs you can, but I normally stay within uh, you know, the 0.5 to 2 inch range for my deficits. But I will say another tip that will largely help you guys out is going to be resetting between every rep. It's going to force you to get in a good position and it's going to help you uh, get smoother pulls off the floor uh, and just make you stronger off the floor. And that's a game changer for me. Uh, so this is uh, 455 right now. Um, actually, I had somebody help me with the camera uh, to get a little bit better angles here. But Really, uh, those would be my three biggest tips for getting stronger off the floor uh, in terms of just importance. So kind of resetting between each rep as you see me doing here, not doing touch and go. I only do touch and go if it's specific for a competition. Example, strongman, 60 second max rep. Uh, but every training session where I'm not getting closer to a show, it's always resetting between every rep. Um, and then doing either the deficit or a pause with the deadlift. Um, this is my top set at 495. Should have just thrown on 2.5s and gone for 500, but uh, it is what it is. And this would I would say would be a true uh, around a eight or nine ish. So my rep scheme for this was working up uh, with fives uh, for a five at seven, five at eight, five at nine, and then do two back off sets at my first starting set, which was going to be 455. Now. Me be having a little bit more experience, I probably should have went to 475 or 485 between before jumping to uh, the 495, uh, and I didn't. So I ended up actually doing I think three uh, back offsets just to make up for not doing that set. Uh, but I just show you two in here, I think. Um, but that was my top set. So then I did the back offsets at 455. Like I said, I did three of them. Just trying to get that volume in but as you can see i'm only wearing straps there's no belt here uh, so that's just how i kind of auto regulate my training uh, and my intensity so typically i you are going to be able to lift more when you are all geared up um, so when you kind of take that stuff away it's going to help dial your intensity down a little bit and help you manage fatigue and training so second lift i did was a banded overhead press uh, just to change it up and do something fun Oh, oh, hey, hey, what are you doing on my my video? Get off my video. No, I'm kidding. I'm really cool with that. I always, um, you are the inconvenience when you have a camera set up in a gym. Always remember that. And I tell that to everybody who sets up a camera in my gym that you are the inconvenience uh, and you need to be working around other people. Okay, a little side rant there. Um, but this is very difficult and I like it because obviously it gets harder as you press towards the top. Um, but typically if I was doing an overhead press, I'd be in the 200 some 
you know, pound range. Uh, but with this, I think I only worked up to 185 on the bar and then went over the two blue bands add in tension, which I'm not specifically sure, but I just use the same bands every training session for this block so that I know uh, the tension is the same. Really just trying to focus on keeping a tight bar path, not letting the bands, you know, take control um, of the press and staying really tight. I just ran a press clinic over the weekend, which was a blast. Uh, so practicing what I preach is trying to build that overhead press. And my goal is to hit a 300 pound strict press in the future. It's just been a personal goal of mine that I'm looking forward to attaining. So this is the top set at uh, 185 plus the bands. And uh, all I did here was just attach them to the spotting arms and use some band pegs. Very simple uh, and, and just something to change it up and kind of add a little bit, something extra to your overhead press. But this will be my uh, third day of overhead pressing. So I've done three press variations so far. And we will move on from this to the next lift, which is Justin. This is my man, Justin. Justin's been programming with me for, I think, definitely over a year now. And when he first started, his deadlift was in the low 300s. Uh, and he's about to pull 500 in the future. And he weighs, uh, I think, about 160, 65. Uh, when he came in with me, he was 150. So he's putting on some size and some strength. And this is Anthony. Anthony's lost over 100 plus pounds um, and is just getting super strong. So really cool to, to have those guys working at the gym and programming with me. Uh, but here, I just showed you the two lifts. This is a 275 pen lay row, really focusing on not using too much leg drive, um, you know, keeping my back set, focusing on the lats. And then I superset it with um, dumbbell neutral grip press. And these are the hundreds. This is actually my last set. And I did a max set uh, of 20. So on my accessory movements uh, for towards the end of the week, I like to do one set where I do like max reps, um, but it's a variation that's not going to be, you know, too uh, fatiguing on me or anything like that. So just kind of getting some some volume in with that that last set. It's almost like a like the Wendler principle, you know, where at the last set you do an AM rep. I kind of just throw that in with my programming and just helps get in some extra volume. Um, but I did that for. Uh, I think it was four four sets total, uh, and then after that moved on to conditioning. So for the conditioning example for you guys, I did every minute on the minute for 15 minutes. Minute one, uh, you have to go hard on the assault bike for 15 seconds, as hard as you can, uh, and you can check the the um, I guess it would be like the RPMs on the bike to see you know if you can sustain an intensity. Uh, and then from there, on the second minute, I do a 100 foot sandbag uh, walk run. Uh, and this one, I think I just had a hundred or 150 pound bag. Wasn't anything too crazy, um, but just kind of getting your feet moving. Just so some sort of carry variation, kind of keep it strong man like. And then you rest the remainder of the minute. And then the last one I did was, uh, I think 25 seconds of battle ropes, any variation. So just keeping those ropes moving for 25 seconds. And then, you know, whenever you're done, you rest until the next minute and you'll do that for 15 minutes. So that's a cool conditioning routine that you guys can try. But anyway, hopefully uh, this is a cool video and you guys enjoy it, but we are gonna get back to the closing. So thanks for tuning in. There you guys have it. Hopefully some of the things I talked about are gonna help you with your training journey. Uh, and if you have any more questions, put them down in the comments section below and I'll be sure to kind of help you guys out best I can or make future videos around those issues that you guys are all having. Uh, but make sure that you subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and then uh, hit that notification bell one more time for me. That would just be super amazing uh, to keep getting this channel to grow even more and reach more people, like-minded individuals who are just trying to get better in the strength sport that we're in. Uh, I'm gonna be heading out to Miami soon to do a collaboration with Steffi Cohen, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, very grateful for the opportunity. I know you guys are going to like the stuff that I'm going to be putting out. Uh, if you didn't know, we have a heavy metal barbecue that's going down to the Lion's Den, which is going to be October 19th and 20th. That will be with Alan Thrall, where you can come and just lift with us on Saturday. It's just going to be a big barbecue. And then on Sunday, we're actually doing a clinic to help you with your deadlift and your squat. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link down below in the description. Uh, spots are almost filled up, but it'd be really cool to, to meet you guys, see you guys, uh, just kind of hang out with us. Um, but until then, be a lean, mean, strike machine, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.